Hi there. Welcome to Module 5. We are now halfway through the class and on to the second half of the semester. So this half of the semester, if you remember, we decided that our threaded discussion and our homework assignments will each be worth 40 points now rather than 25 points. You'll notice for the next couple of weeks that the reading is about half of what it was than during the first couple of weeks of the semester. And that's so that you can really spend some time thinking and doing the discussions and the, the homework assignments. Okay. So this top to this week's topic is on work. And I have to be honest with you, this is one of my favorite topics because it's one of my research areas. The work that we do as, as individuals is an important part of our lives. It often is part of our self-definition. The work that we do is tied into so many other institutions, to our family, to the economy. It's rarely without interconnections to so many others, all right? And because of that, it's important that we think about it well and that we think about it critically. All right, so what I'm going to do is go over the elements of the module. We'll talk about the assignments, then the threaded discussion, and the homework assignment. And then I'll spend quite a bit of time at the end of this module talking about your homework assignment. Okay, so what I'd suggest is that you begin by reading the short story, The Office, by Alice Munro. Think about a woman setting up her own office and how her landlord relates to it and the meanings behind that story. Next, read carefully, and I'm going to suggest that you read it two times. All right, that first piece in Feminist Frontiers by Bose and Whaley on sex segregation in the workplace. Pay attention to terms and concepts. And I'm going to give you a list right here of terms and concepts in that chapter that you should pay attention to. All right, here they go. Occupational sex segregation, the index of dissimilarity, white collar, blue collar, and pink collar jobs. What do each of those mean? Terms such as, or these are phrases, the glass ceiling, the glass escalator, and the sticky floor. Think, um, understand what the historical meaning of a family wage is. Pay attention to the section of the text that talks about explanations for occupational sex segregation, okay, that include kind of individual socialization, okay, the important human capital theory, then structural theories, including those about social control. Okay, the end of that piece is about consequences of occupational sex segregation, including the wage gap, tokenism, hindered mobility, and sexual harassment. Okay? So after you read that piece, and again, I'm going to, going to suggest that you read it twice, I want you to access the specific pieces on Wyoming, and you have two. There is a Wyoming public media um, story on the wage gap, all right, that I was, I was interviewed for about a year and a half ago. All right, and then there is an article from the Wyoming Labor Force Trends magazine on the gender wage gap that was published two months ago. Okay, I want you to access that article, and you'll see that on the side there are charts and graphs. You need to click on those so that they get bigger. And I'd even suggest for that you, you need to take notes on them. I, need, I want you to really, really pay attention to that article as well as the evidence that is given in those charts, all right, on Wyoming. Wyoming has the worst wage gap between men and women in the nation, all right, in the nation, okay? So pay attention to those really carefully.
Your thread of discussion for this week will have you kind of think about the Wyoming data, the Wyoming information in relation to the Bose and Whaley piece, all right, and have you think about um, solutions, okay? Okay. Now, in a little bit, I'm going to talk about uh, our homework assignment, which is going to get to, on a kind of individual level, explanations, okay? Explanations for that wage gap. Okay. Before we get to that, I want you to read and, re and view the remaining articles and videos that have us think more critically about kind of other aspects of work and some of the fascinating piece about body work all right as an ex as an example of and an extension of what's called emotional labor all right emotional labor we often think of work as physical labor right um, we've got some important work about the emotional labor that often women do and this piece is about body work and in particular nail salons all right and then move to some of the video, the video that talks about um, STEM occupations and the importance of considerations of race and class as well as sex. Okay, so now let's move to the homework. All right, and I'm very excited about this homework assignment. And in fact, this homework assignment is going to go over two weeks. Well, actually, you'll have a choice in the second week if you want to continue it. But this first week, everyone will be doing the same homework assignment. And that homework assignment is to have you understand a bit better through an interview, all right, through an interview, the opportunities and constraints that one person has had regarding his or her work life. All right, and so I'm just showing you, I've got printed out here a copy of her assignment, and so I'm going to go through it with you, all right, um, as if I was in class with you, and, and hopefully if you have any questions, all right, you'll email me. Okay, so what we're going to do in this assignment is an interview. All right, I want you to choose one person, all right, one person, one person only, all right, and I want you to find out about his or her work life, all right. The research question that we're answering is, what opportunities and constraints have shaped the work life experience of an individual? Right. I know that most of the students in this class are physically in Wyoming right now, not all of you, but most of you are. And again, we know from having looked at those materials that Wyoming has the worst wage gap in the nation. And that the explanation for that is typically the occupational sex segregation of the jobs and the wages that are associated with those jobs. Okay, so we're going to explore in here the opportunities and constraints of an individual. All right, then what I'm going to have you do next week is look at some of your classmates' papers with yours and compare and contrast and see what you can come up with in terms of those three or four people. What kind of themes emerge in terms of their kind of work-life experiences. But we'll get to that portion of it next week. But for this week, your assignment is to do an interview with one person and to write up all right, your interview results. All right, the one person that I want you to interview, my preference is that it not be your mom or dad or husband or wife or partner. All right, why not? All right, why not? All right, the simple explanation is you're too close to them. All right, you're too close. And that he or she, you know, might not be comfortable answering honestly. All right, you don't want to find out, or your mom, for example, might want, might not want to tell you, you know, the real reason that she needed to leave school. Yeah, I'm making that up. All right, um, but that's the reason that you typically don't ask somebody who that who is that close to you. However, for this assignment, and I know that we only have a week to do it in, that I'm not kind of forbidding you. All right, from using someone that close as your interview subject. 
Also, I hope that if some of you are out there and don't have anybody around you and are not comfortable asking a neighbor um, or somebody that you work with to do this interview, that you're available to each other, all right, in order to be interview subjects. All right, so I want you to interview one person. Your interview will take about 30 minutes. I give you an interview protocol. All right, and a protocol is also called a, an interview instrument. All right, and basically what it is, it's the guiding questions for your interview. All right, I tell you it would be best for you to start off by answering these questions yourself. All right, before you talk with your interviewee. All right, get a sense for how you would answer them. All right, when you're having your interview, you're going to be wanting to talk with a person. This isn't a questionnaire, all right? This isn't um, somebody doing a survey on the phone, right? This is, this is simply a road map, all right, for the way that your conversation could run. And so I suggest that you begin with, you know, asking your interviewee, tell me about your first job for pay, all right? And I tell you, this is a great icebreaker. All right, kind of people can kind of remember back to, and often you're going to find kind of jobs within the family. You're going to find, you know, babysitting or mowing the lawn, and sometimes something um, much more interesting. My first job for pay, okay, believe it or not, my father and his brother used to love to go to the racetrack, all right, horses, all right, in New York. And as a little kid, I had really good handwriting. And so, oh, and I should tell you, my, my dad and his brother, they liked to gamble, and they had systems, and they believed they were going to make their fortune in the horses, which of course they didn't. But my job, and I think I was only six or seven years old, was to actually take a racing form and copy numbers out of it into their three ring binder for their system. So I was a five, I don't know, six year old, seven year old, who basically knew that the, the basics of handicapping for horse racing. All right, that was my first job. But this is a great icebreaker. And you always want to be asking, all right, to the extent that you're comfortable, you know, do you remember how much you were paid? What was it like working there? Who else worked there? All right, because again, ultimately, we're getting at the answer to the research question, which is what opportunities and constraints, all right, existed for this individual. Okay, so tell me about your first job for pay. What do you remember about what you wanted to do for work when you grew up? Why? Were you encouraged to pursue this occupation or not? What jobs have you had? How'd you get them? All right. Do you remember your pay and benefits? All right. You want to tease out um, things about um, education. You want to tease out relationships. Oh, yeah, my uncle got me that job. My dad trained me doing acts. Oh, my aunt's best friend really needed somebody to be cleaning houses. All right, something along those lines. All right. How do you think about education, on-the-job training, and or personal connections in terms of your work history? What's been important? All right. As you moved between jobs and as you think into the future, what factors have played or are playing into your decisions, okay? All right, so those are just questions to kind of get you going, all right, with your interview. All right, either record your interview or take notes, all right? Record your interview or take notes, all right? You're going to want those quotes for your paper. So your assignment for this week is to write up that interview. All right, I want you to write it up in narrative form, all right? I don't want you to basically, you know, take the questions and just um, fill in the answer. Instead, I want you to write a narrative. And I give you on our assignment page what that could look like, right? And I tell you, begin with saying something like, and give your person a pseudonym. I interviewed Mariah, a 34-year-old woman living in Green River, Wyoming. The interview took place on June 19th at a local coffee shop and lasted approximately one hour. Mariah is my sister supervisor at the local grocery store. Mariah has worked at the grocery store for five years. She earns $15 an hour without benefit and works about 35 hours per week. Mariah has lived in Green River her entire life and has been married for 10 years and has two kids aged 7 and 3. Her husband works in the oil patch and is away for several days at a time. All right, and then just keep on going. Okay, I want you to end your paper with talking about the answer for your particular interview for 
this interview subject. What were the opportunities and constraints, all right, that have been important in his or her life? Okay, all right, so there's no page limit for this assignment, but I expect it to be about two to five pages. And what I need you to do is to upload it to me in two different ways. All right, one, the way that you've been doing all the rest of your homework assignments, right, you just, you know, put it in as a homework assignment. That's what I need in order to kind of grade it and give the comments back to you. All right, so you need to do that by Sunday. I also want you to upload it as a link to the discussion module six, all right, discussion module six. All right, so then it will be available to your small group for them to take a look at for next week's assignment. But you don't need to worry about that yet. But again, I need you to upload this in two different ways. Okay, so I'm very, very excited about your threaded discussion as well as this homework assignment. Again, it really has you putting on this researcher cap. And let me tell you that this is real research. I needed to get permission from the university for you to do this research and I've put on our website what that form looked like so that you understood that what the process is in order for a class to do real research with real human subjects. Okay, um, I hope that you're all doing well and I look forward to this week. Bye-bye.